Hi everyone, welcome back. I have really gone back and forth with myself about whether or not I'm gonna make this video. I have thought, no, I am not gonna make that video. I'm not gonna to touch that. But the more headlines I see and social media comments I see and the more advice I see being given, the more it indicates that we probably should have a chat about it because it's not the first time this has happened and it's certainly not gonna be the last. So if you're not familiar with Whitney Port, she is an OG of reality TV. She started off on the Hill. She could then got her own show on the city. It was a mid 2000s juggernaut. It was so influential in terms of like its impact on culture, empire waistlines, fake sex tapes, side parts, those bands that we used to wear around our heads like crowns at festivals. It was massive. I think 10% of my brain developed around those series. And I rediscovered Whitney when she and her husband, Timmy, were doing a rewatch series of the Hills and the City on their YouTube channel. But Whitney also speaks about some really tough topics. She talks about her experience with miscarriage, with loss. She talks about the loss of her father to cancer, which was particularly relatable and important for me to find at that time of my life, because that was just prior to my own dad passing away from cancer. And she just has a way of being very, very honest and open and vulnerable in a relatable way. When I went into labor and had the baby, like all those big moments were very bittersweet because I instantly thought about him, instantly wanted him to be there, wanted him to share in the excitement, but also to be there for me. So it didn't surprise me when I saw headlines going around indicating that she had jumped on her Instagram to express that she had taken note of the amount of comments on her Instagram and her videos calling attention to the fact that she had gone through a period of weight loss and that her appearance was drawing concern from her audience. In the same story, she mentioned that her husband, Timmy, had privately expressed his concern about her weight loss. And she then went into greater depth on her podcast, talking about the fact that she is now aware that she is taking uh, action, that she is most importantly seeking out the advice of professionals and that the most recent information she's been given is that it is quite likely depression with disordered eating manifesting as a result of that depression, which as we know for the majority of people, that is how these things manifest. There are comorbidities like trauma, anxiety, depression, etc., And the eating disorder is really an expression of that core issue and becomes sort of a coping mechanism to help navigate those things. Whitney has been very, very open and honest about her experience with fertility over the last few years, how it's made her feel out of control of her body, uh, how her experience with miscarriage similarly made her feel out of control of her body. So she has, again, been very, very generous in how she's shared her experience uh, with all of these different issues and now with disordered eating. So as somebody who has been advocating for uh, people with eating disorders and advocating around subjects like recovery, etc., you might have thought that when I saw her being so open and vulnerable and generous, uh, sharing things in real time as she's discovering them, not saying, Last year, I found out or I realized and I went to see and now I know in real time she was sharing these updates. You might be surprised to know that my first response was, oh, Whitney, please be careful. <laughs> and here is why. Prior to Whitney sharing what was going on, yes, there were genuine comments of concern, etc., but most of them were geared around her appearance and leaving comments that were just totally unproductive. Just eat a burger. You need to eat more. Uh, you know, your body is X, Y, Z. All of these things which just boil down whatever is going on to food and body, right? Now, since she's come out and said, I hear you. I hear my husband. I'm, you know, taking steps towards addressing whatever it is that's going on and addressing even the underlying issues of depression, etc. People feel even more entitled <laughs> to jump into her comments, to comment on her body, to comment on her intake, to comment on what she should or shouldn't be doing, despite the fact that she is not only acknowledged that there is potentially an issue here and now that there is an issue, but that she is most crucially relying on the advice and guidance of professionals to take whatever steps she needs to take for herself. Whitney has jumped onto her social media to sort of express boundaries around this and that she is really not finding it helpful to be constantly inundated with this feedback. She's been accused of things like body checking. She didn't even know what body checking was before she was accused of body checking on her Instagram, etc. I think the reason why this is important to talk about 
is because we do see this happening over and over again, whether it's people with a lot of visibility on social media who are more like social media personalities or celebrities, how entitled people feel to use somebody's recovery or somebody's disordered eating or eating disorder as like a spectator sport and to throw their two cents in and to think that because of what they can see and what they're taking in visually as far as somebody's body or as far as the insight that they have to what they eat and how they eat, etc., that they are entitled to provide feedback, advice, guidance, etc. And it is totally inappropriate. I don't just see people who are ignorant because they don't understand eating disorders, etc. But people in her comment sections who are expressing some kind of solidarity by saying they have their own lived experience and then casting all these judgments and giving all of this uh, instruction and feedback and criticizing what she is doing and isn't doing when we just cannot possibly really know what someone is doing behind the scenes, particularly when we've reacted in this way and they probably become even more reticent to share which is where my concern always comes from. If you are somebody who is already a public person uh, and you start talking about this stuff, I know from being in this space for 10 years exactly what that can invite in. My advice to people is always wait until you are in something that you can identify as like a solid recovery or a solid amount of progress before you start sharing this stuff publicly. Now, does that sound hypocritical coming from somebody whose entire platform and business and advocacy is built around the fact that I started sharing my story from day one? Potentially, but a bit more context is required. For the first two years that I was on this channel, nobody was watching me. There were probably 20 or 30 people here before the channel really started to grow. And by that point, all of my sort of really vulnerable periods of recovery were over. All the times where that really strong, really intense feedback and judgment and criticism that would have quite likely derailed me at times if it had shown up in the first couple of years, which it didn't. That is something that has changed a lot in the last 10 years. People are recovering from day one in real time in front of an audience. And you already have so much loud criticism and judgment and feedback noise in your head if you have disordered eating or an eating disorder or body dysmorphia, whatever the issue is for you in this category of fun that we deal with, you already have so much feedback noise and so much of a battle between you and you. And then obviously the voices of treatment and your support system. And then you potentially have the voices of thousands or even millions of other people chiming in and making something that is already so challenging, even more challenging. The nature of recovery is that you are second guessing yourself because when you're achieving something in recovery, you are failing at your eating disorder and vice versa. When you are doing what your eating disorder wants to do and you're achieving its goals, you feel you are failing at recovery. This is why my my advice to someone like Whitney, my advice to somebody who is wanting to share their recovery, which I can't say don't do that because I did it. (laughs) I just think there are specific ways to do it, which are going to be more productive from your, for your process, because your recovery is the most precious thing you have. And if that means that you need to protect it from people who are with a, whether with good intentions or not trying to insert themselves into it in a way that's inappropriate. And here's how you know it's inappropriate. You've never spent time with that person. You've never sat in a room with them. They don't have your phone number in their phone. (laughs) I think a really great example of this is actually from the Real Housewives, which I've thought about doing a little bit of a deep dive on how the different Real Housewives franchises have spoken about and treated the subject of eating disorders because it varies from the terrible to yeah, that's that's actually pretty decent coverage of that. And one instance is on the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I think it was Jackie. We saw her sort of come to the realization that there was something there that she needed to address as far as her eating disorder. I just don't want to do this anymore. Well, that's why I think you should see somebody soon. Okay. But then she took a season off. And she did that because she knew that she was going to be going through recovery and that she would quite likely go through some physical changes. And I think she was a friend of the show. So she was only on it a handful of times, but she wasn't sort of in the spotlight. 
so that she could navigate that more vulnerable period of recovery without prying eyes and that feedback and the noise of how many people in the audience drawing conclusions, throwing out ignorant advice or well-intended advice. So that is one of my takeaways. If you are someone who is already a public person, as much as this might seem strange from someone who is always saying, we need more voices, we need more faces, we absolutely do, but never at the risk of your own well-being and your own ability to get yourself to a safer, healthier place ever, 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 whether or not that means never sharing it, or that means waiting to share it, but to be really, really mindful of when you're sharing it. Uh, And that's unfortunate. I wish that my answer was different, but we have seen this so, so, so many times in terms of people just feeling so entitled, not just when they suspect there might be an eating disorder or disordered eating at play, but when they get the confirmation, it's like everyone goes and reserves a seat in the grandstand to set up shop and then critique and just pull people apart as they're going through the process. A great example being body checking, like I referenced before. Whitney Port doesn't know what body checking is. All of this is very new to her. She may be body checking. I've seen her Instagram. One could argue she is. You could really call anything body checking if you're taking a photo of yourself, right? It's about the intention and we can never really know somebody's intention. But she didn't even know what it was. She didn't even know that it could potentially be a behavior. People just came at her judging her for body checking And like I said, she could be body checking, but body checking is a symptom. So we're judging and shaming someone for a symptom they're probably not even aware of, even if if it is a symptom that, that is, you know, taking place. And then putting them in a position where they have to be on the defense, being accused of something that they didn't even have language for. So it's, it's this strange phenomenon uh, all the way through from obviously like people on this platform who people are just happily you they're using this person's illness as a spectator sport in the worst iteration of it but even through the recovery process like i have people often sending me accounts of people who are clearly unwell saying mia can you critique this person can you call them out and i'm like they're not well i mean the only thing i would tell them is get off the internet because people are sending me your stuff and If they're sending it to me, I can only imagine what your comment section looks like. Or, you know, I mean, I do understand it when people send me stuff of, you know, someone who's actively unwell and they're also like selling things and guiding other people through recovery that I'm not a fan, not a fan. But also I still have my foot on the brake being like, this person is actively unwell. What are we critiquing here? Somebody who's mentally ill. That's a tricky one. But as far as sharing your recovery online, I think Whitney is a great example of really exercising caution and really being particular about how and when you choose to share and making sure that it really is productive for your process. And also coming back to the fact that you're not obligated to share any of this stuff. But once you open the door, there is this strange phenomenon with eating disorders and recovery where people will just want to park up and watch and throw tomatoes at you for being unwell and trying and trying to get better and not understanding all the verbiage and all the, you know, ins and outs of recovery because she only just started exploring this stuff a couple of months ago. And there are people who will make the argument and are making the argument that at this stage of her illness, she shouldn't be showing her body and she shouldn't be posting her body. People with eating disorders are allowed to exist in the world. As long as they are not accompanying those photos with instruction manuals on how to develop an eating disorder and use the behaviors that they use. And my answer when people send me that stuff and they're like, Mia, should this person be posting this? I'm like, I mean, that's a very subjective question. But what's clearer to me is that if you have an, so much awareness that it's not healthy for you to be looking at, that you're sending it to me, why are you looking at it? If you have the awareness that this is not a productive thing for you to be looking at, that's a great thing. That is a great thing. Utilize that. Stop looking at it. Stop looking at things which are triggering or which are not healthy for you to be looking at. But that doesn't negate somebody's right to exist in the world, whatever stage of their eating disorder or recovery they're at. So they're my thoughts. Maybe some of them not so popular. I think of myself more as a realist when it comes to these sorts of issues within recovery and what we're seeing online and how people portray recovery, etc. 
the line for me is if they are monetizing something which is just super, super disordered or they're not qualified or, you know, any of those things that I've mentioned in the last 10 years. (laughs) But people who are mentally ill, people who are suffering from eating disorders are allowed to exist in the world with the same freedoms, privileges and rights as the rest of us. So those are my thoughts. As always, I love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below. I'm also going to pop in the promo for our second, that's four, it's meant to be two, uh, our second Beyond Body Retreat, which is now scheduled for April of 2024. One of the tickets is already gone, so make sure you jump onto that ASAP. We are heading back to the New South Wales South Coast in Mollymook for five life-changing days. It is going to be incredible. And if you want to get in touch, like I said, head to the link. We then book in a free consultation call with Holly and I to talk you through all the details and answer all of your questions. Um, But we love doing this stuff uh, and can't wait to bring back the retreat for another year. So much love to you guys. Take care and we'll